tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Discussing camera position. We got, we got another one. We got another forever song in there. This one was a YouTube request. Yes, Shay from YouTube, thank you for requesting Kenny Loggins, Kenny Loggins. forever. I it's it. perfect. This is for you, Shay. It's absolutely perfect. Welcome, guys, to the AfterBuzz TV Forever After Show. I am your host, Kate Aquilano, joined by my lovely co host, Tiger Rad. Hi, guys. Hi, I'm Marilyn Mandel. And we have a very special guest in studio, creator of Forever, Matt Miller. Hello. Oh, we got a little applause. Hear the applause. All right, well, tonight was season one, episode seven, New York Kids. But before we get to that, we just want to pick your brain about Let's this, talk. about our new favorite show, Forever. Great, thank you. So, you're the creator. How did how did you come up with this? How did you get involved? How, the origin of the idea? Origin. So, um... But, uh, all right. So what happened was um, I was putting um, my uh, five-year-old son to bed one night, and um, he asked me, as like five-year-olds, you know, can do. He said, um, "Daddy, are you ever going to die someday?" Oh. Boy. And you're like, you know, you don't want to tell them. And so I said, uh, "No, no, I'll never die." Um, you know, I didn't want to upset him or anything. And then I thought about it, and I realized you're, you know, supposed to build like trust through honesty and all that kind of business. So I decided to come clean. So I said, all right, I, Daddy wasn't completely truthful. I will die someday, but it won't be for a very long time, and by then you'll probably want me to be dead. Uh, at which point he burst into tears. My wife like Aww. came running into the room, and I was kind of banished from the room, and yeah. she continued raising my kid. <laughs> and I went off to write television. And so I started like kind of playing with that idea about like what if a character, you know, for some reason couldn't or wouldn't die okay you know all the amazing things that you could do with with eternity and then you start to think well but what if my son wasn't immortal too you know would it would it watching him grow old and die and friends and family and all that stuff would it prove to be more of a, like a curse than a blessing mm -hmm. so i started with that kind of idea of, of a character that like kind of had the thing that we all wanted you know mm -hmm. on some level and, and that he he didn't want it. He was there to tell you that like I have immortality and it's it's terrible. Right. Um, and and to start with that kind of you know conflict in the character. Mm -hmm. And then the Emmy. And then you figured, well, what does he do for a living? And it was like, well, it may be fun if like he was surrounded by death. Like mm -hmm. if a guy who couldn't achieve it, like but really wanted it, you know, was surrounded by it all day. And so he, you know, the the doctor thing sort of came into it, and then the medical examiner part. Well, that story is probably why the Abe Henry storyline is so strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think, like, yeah, you start to think about that. And then you're like, well, yeah, what if, you know, you had a kid? And, and even though Abe is not his, his natural son, that, like, because I didn't want, I felt that by this point in his life, he probably would have had some natural kids and decided he wasn't going to have any more kids. Mm -hmm. Make a conscious decision. And then, you know, through fate kind of intervening is when he met Abigail and then you know, Abe and, mm -hmm. and, you know, ended up raising him. Yeah, I know that's all of our favorite storyline. Yeah. Every time it's yeah. Abe and Henry, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have great chemistry, those guys. Um, speaking of that relationship, did you, when you were casting those two roles, did you immediately think of Johan and Judd, or was it, how did um, they come to you? Because well, I think they work so well together. They, it's just, you know, it's one of those kind of, like, roll the dice kind of alchemy things, and it just works. Uh, the first person who was cast in the show was Judd. We, we sort of, you know, made a list of, of actors for, for Abe, and it was sort of like, yeah, well, Judd Hirsch, perfect. And then we sent it to him, and, and he agreed to do it. So he was, he was really, like, easy piece of the puzzle that nice. fell into place. And then um, with Henry, it was really hard to find Henry because, like, you know, I needed to, like, hear someone read it and needed to, like, feel it, and you needed to believe, like, because the concept's so big, you needed an actor that, like, 
could do the humor and the romance, but that really would ground the performance. Like you'd really believe mm-hmm. that this guy lived for like over 200 years. And and we looked in LA and New York and Canada and London and Australia wow. and like South Africa. We were looking for, ev- for everywhere. Wow. And, um, and then one day I was dropping both of my kids off at preschool and um, this guy like was getting into his car and he had like these was rocking these white loafers and I was just it was just like shocking to see a man in white loafers and no socks and I was like god who is that guy and then uh, I realized it was Yoan and I, I you know I had never worked with him or anything but I knew him from like Fantastic Four and those movies and I was like god that guy is really interesting and so you know the casting director called his agent sent him the script he liked it we met then he came in read it and it was great Wow. wow. We really have your five-year-old to thank for this yeah. series. Really I, know, I, know, I have a five-year-old and a six-year-old. <laughs> six-year-old. And yeah, yeah, yeah. This was, uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. well, one of my kids is, is Henry, so we don't have Henry. <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah. gosh. So but when you're coming together. is like, what's going on here? This yeah. is like, when you come into the show next time, you have to bring them. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah. a- uh, <laughs> one of the, quick story, one of the first people I met when I came to L.A. for the first time, I sat next to you and I a restaurant and oh, he really? couldn't have been nicer yeah he's like the loveliest nicest hardest working he is a, a total dream to work mm-hmm. with it's fantastic that's awesome yeah so should we start some with the quick, twitter questions yeah the twitter we got tons of responses from you guys on twitter so thanks Good. so much for tweeting your questions out uh we'll start out with at addy cole what was henry's first car I mean. Well, <laughs> there, <there's, laughs> there probably wasn't cars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So he was, you know, he's, he predates the automobile um, and the airplane. Um, but uh, I don't, you know, I, 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 he has a thing for Jaguars that we learned in tonight's mm-hmm. episode. But we will also come to learn that he hasn't driven for a very long time. Um, so while he appreciates certain cars, he, he actually doesn't drive. So I don't know his first car. I mean, I'm not as be like a Model T or something. I would imagine <laughs> his first car would be the first car. Yeah, exactly, would be exactly. The first car ever. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be a fun storyline, though. Actually, to to see Henry like driving like one of the early first cars and then you know crashing and dying. And dying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's always fun. You can kill your hero whenever you you want. I know uh, Mary Lou is wearing a scarf. It's a little hot in here. Oh, I, so, I have it, so you have it. One okay. of our Twitter followers. Uh, yeah, there you go. Nice. Because I don't get Halloween. I have to work on Halloween. So, oh, so you're, you're dressing up. Okay, you're good. dressing up. My costume. You're Henry Morgan? Yes. yes. So Anna uh, Eventis, I think I'm saying her name right. Does Henry have extra of his favorite scarves in case he dies while wearing one and loses it? That's a great question. Yes, he has to have, if he finds something that's working for him, he has to have doubles of tweed suits and scarves and vests and nice shoes yeah. and things like that. Yes. When he dies, it's very, it's a little complicated when yeah, he dies. Yeah, we always yeah. get. Let's yeah. talk. So yeah. how did you, like the rules, like so everything he has on him yeah. disappears, but yeah. like not the stopwatch, but his clothes disappear. No, the stopwatch, if he had... Anything on his person oh, okay. that he has on his person disappears. So, you know, fortuitously, like when he shot at the be- in the pilot, like um, first on the slave ship, you see the pocket watch mm-hmm. fall out of him. Mm-hmm. And then on the subway, the pocket watch sort of falls out. And that's what Joe finds on the, on the uh, subway car. So like the pocket watch is one of those things that worked really, really nicely in the pilot. But when you start to do it in series, it's sort of like, you know, it's a big pain in the ass because if he happens to, he has to fortuitously leave the pocket watch at home. If he, yeah. if he imagines he's going here. into danger, yeah. And that's yeah. why we don't see the watch anymore. But that's why we don't really deal with the watch that yeah, much we anymore. thought it was going to be like a, a little symbol going forward we, after the pilot. We, we will revisit the pocket watch and revisit the origin of the pocket watch and, and how he got the pocket watch and those circumstances. And, you know, because we're going to do an episode... Um, um, episode 14 which will be it, it's our f- only flashback that we'll have done that predates Henry's affliction nice. so we'll get to see Henry in London like circa like 1812 or something before he got on the slave ship and why he got on the slave ship and all that kind of and stuff. so will that give us some insight into the curse and how he he got this maybe maybe a little little. i think that that's like to me like the why he got the curse is is the the very slow kind of burn mythology stuff that will take place over the course of many seasons in in a perfect world but but the, the you know like this season we're really dealing with a lot of the abigail backstory mm-hmm. the um 
story between Adam and Henry and how long that actually, you know, has lasted. And, and you know, maybe there's things that Henry learns that he didn't, you know, um, interactions between the two of them that he may not have known about. And, and we'll, yeah, get into that kind of interpersonal stuff um, without and, and he'll certainly learn more about his affliction and a little bit of the rules of it that he didn't know through Adam. Um, but um, we're not going to, like, solve the mystery of, of why he's immortal or anything. Well, yeah. Adam is a big thing that we always are thinking about and a lot of the Twitter followers are thinking about. So specifically, Redhead03, Stacy was asking for spoilers on Adam. you have anything you can give us? Any little juicy? teases? Um, let's see. So Adam, it, it was just in last week's episode, mm-hmm. uh, Jack the Ripper. That was and, a good episode. Yeah, it was a really good episode. And... Um, and he will return um, in an episode uh, sort of right before Christmas. And um, we will meet Adam. Ooh. How about that? Okay, so Yay. was it him outside calling him? Because her and I thought that we saw him for a split you, second. When he comes outside. In the Jack the, the Ripper episode. Yeah. In the Jack the Ripper episode, he calls Henry. And then he comes outside and we saw for a split second. They're like at the older butcher. Man. Right, so yeah, I guess the yeah. question is, have we seen Adam? And, then, that the, and, him? Then, the, and the phone's there and all yeah. that stuff. But like, there's stuff. a quick yeah. crowd shot. Yeah, quick. I don't know. I don't know if we've seen him. I don't uh, know. I don't know. Yeah. I swear. <laughs> I look so shady. You, you may have to go we'll, back and we'll look at some stuff. We'll go back and we'll compare. I'm going to freeze say, it on the DVR. Yeah, yeah we'll freeze, freeze it. it yeah. And then, uh, yeah, wait till episode 11. Watch, it's like Matt. He's like the extra. Yeah, yeah. It's me. Um, Hello, Henry. <laughs> you said that Abigail is really important in uh, season one. Is Abigail still alive? Because I think she is. Um, maybe. Maybe. Undecided. Well, okay. I know the answer. I just don't oh, want okay. yeah, to say right. the answer. But, <laughs> but, uh, but we're going to, um, will we find out? Yeah, we're going to learn a lot more about Abigail and Henry and why they aren't together and what sort of happened there okay. and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I love I love the flashbacks. Oh, cool. I love the history. So I love that you yeah. and I love the writers. Kudos to the writers. They yeah. they you know weave the present story and the right. flashbacks thematically. So into, yeah. well. Oh, and cool. it's, it's done really. Yeah. I Thanks. can't complain. Yeah, we've got. Um, let's see. Next week's is really or ne- uh, not next week. We're off for the election, but then mm-hmm. the week after, our flashback story is really fun. The, the episode is a um, a dominatrix kind of episode, so it's like our Fifty Shades of Grey episode, and, yeah. and it sort of deals with trust, which is really what happens when you go, you know, get into that kind of um, S and M stuff. Mm. And so the flashback um, actually tells the story of Henry's first wife. So it starts in like eighteen fifteen, like wow. a year after he was in the shipwreck shot whatever on the mm-hmm. slave ship and so we get to meet her when, and she didn't realize that henry was still alive mm-hmm. so we meet her for the first time she's sort of mourning over the grave of henry and then he kind of wow. like, hey, surprise, why? surprise i'm not dead yeah and then you know it takes a little while for him to decide can he should he or shouldn't he tell her she because you know as far as she's concerned you know he just sort of survived a shipwreck mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just, but he's got a little bit more to that story. Mm-hmm. And so does he tell her or not tell her? Well, yeah. speaking of the dominatrix, we just learned that it's One Tree Hill alum, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hillary Burton, yeah, that's going to play that. Yeah. I know One Tree Hill fans are so excited. But oh, Entertainment good. Weekly said the characters fall for each other. I think that there's like a little bit of chemistry there. Okay. You know? um, they're not going to run off into the sunset I, know, it's only, I was like, she's yeah. only guest star in yeah. one episode. Well, she, you know, we'll see. She could come back. But, um, but uh, yeah, there's just like a, an interesting kind of connection that they make in that okay. episode. What about Joe and Henry? I like... Is it just a friendship? Is there going to be... I, I sometimes... I mean, I, I see the whole friendship thing, the, yeah. the banter, super yeah. cute. I like the friendship. But once in a while, I just feel glam- like glimpses of... There may a be a little, little bit spark. More. A I spark. think there'll be a little bit of a spark. Okay. I think that, um, yeah, it's like with that kind of stuff, like I, it's it's a little bit, you know, you have to be very careful because once you start turning on like the will they or won't they, you're just on that train. Right, right. And so it's kind of hard to get off of that. And so we're going to try and mine as much kind of emotional core for them, like an emotional connection, like. 
you know, he's had a lot of loss and Abigail and all that business. And then she and her husband, and we'll get into that story. And we're going to tell like a really nice Joe and her dead husband story. Yeah, and, uh, a nice I feel story. Like a really sweet, funny <laughs> Joe and her, and her dead, dead husband. husband. Yeah. I feel like in tonight's episode, we kind of got a foreshadow yeah. of Joe and her husband's yeah. kind of what happened there, right? Yeah, um, and we will, you know, really dive into it in an episode. There'll be an episode where, like, Joe sort of has to, you know, they have to solve an A story, but that the A story directly relates to, like, her dead husband. So it forces her to, like, kind of deal with all this baggage stuff that she hasn't dealt with. And she's, they find, like, an old deposition tape, because he was an attorney, of of a case that he was working on. And then so she gets to see him you know, like in a deposition in like footage that she never even knew kind of existed. And at the end of the deposition, there's like this really nice moment where like, you know, they stop like um, interviewing the um, the person and um, and her his phone rings and it's her and it's Joe. And so she gets to like kind of watch this conversation Ooh. that she didn't even know was film that she had sort of had with him yeah. before he died. Yeah. All right. Well, that was Zora's wow, question. So there yeah, you go from Zora. That's another um, like super funny episode. Well, then speaking of <laughs> Joe, I just want to say thanks for the dynamic female characters. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. we've got Joe, we've got the lieutenant. Yeah. Abigail's really Lorraine. interesting. Yeah, and Abigail, the Frenchman, yeah. I love. Frenchman yes. was great. I was yes. like, yes, Frenchman. Are we going to see more of her? <laughs> we do need um, more Frenchman. We could bring the Frenchman back, at least like for Abe, you know? Yeah, please yeah. for Abe. But we heard. E Harmony so, dates are I know, the E Harmony is not working. But we heard that. That, um, one of his ex-wives is coming on. Yeah, we have, uh, again, that's not this coming Tuesday because there's the election. The Tuesday after, we have um, an episode where Abe's um, ex twice divorced. He's, he's married her twice and divorced her twice, ex-wife. <laughs> wow. Uh, oh, Abe. Yeah. yeah. They, think they were married twice for probably like six months total over a period of like 20 years you know like they just kind of fall back into it every few years and then don't and so she comes back into the antique shop um looking for abe and and looking for action and that character is played by jane seymour and they're just they're great together it's super funny and really like which again was cast by a child yeah we heard that wendy's uh and john's daughter suggested jane and then Jane sent her a video thanking her for the role. Did you see the video? I didn't. No, that's uh, awesome. We'll show you yeah. after. We showed it to uh, our to the fans because oh, it was really? so cute to oh, take that's the adorable. time. Well, yeah, that's fantastic. So she really liked that. Um, <laughs> so two weeks ago, ABC ordered some additional scripts. Yeah. So what does that mean? Season two. Uh, well, first we wanted, you know, we got we got we got to get a full season one here. Um, but is that that's? that's but it was it was it was an, it's a good vote of confidence, and um, and so yeah, we're cer- certainly planning on like a you know twenty two like our our season has been broken in the writers' room as if we're doing twenty two. So we have planned okay. that out. Oh. So hopefully, yeah, ho- you know, they seem really happy. Like creatively, you know, like a lot of times you'll have like the network or the studio they throw scripts out and outlines or mm-hmm. whatever. We've, they've been great so far we've gotten a lot of support from abc and warner brothers um in like the creative elements of the show so yeah hopefully you know fingers crossed they let us keep doing it because it's so much fun to make yeah no it must be so fun do you we were talking before do you visit because you're based in la but it's shot in new york do you visit new york a lot yeah i go like probably once every three weeks or a month and um, just sort of pop in. But then, like, you know, like, it's, it's weird because it's just so hard not to be able to, like, walk down to the set. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, you know, just not being there. Like, the writers will go to produce their episodes. And um, John Kretschmer, we have a producing director who is from L.A. that lives there. Because the directors come in and different directors direct every, you know, episode. Mm-hmm. But you have one person that's there. But, like, I don't know, like, today was, like, a weird day where, you know, like, first thing in the morning I got a call from Alana. There was, like, a question about something. And then... Later on in the day, I had a yo and called me about, so, you know, it's, sometimes there's just like something in like the air yeah. where you feel like, oh, God, I wish I could just like walk down to the set right yeah. now and totally unrelated questions about totally different like situations. Um, and then like so that's why you got to go like every three weeks. You just got to like let them know Thanks. that like, hey, guys, I'm still and, <laughs> and for, for them, they're just getting new scripts and shooting the episodes. But like for me, you know, I see them like in the editing room like all day every day so it feels like you're you know sort of still there with them is there an additional showrunner outside of you that's on set all Mm -hmm. the time 
No, they no, just can call no. you. It's a, is that hard to do remotely? Like, yeah, obviously. yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You just gotta keep. You the just phone have your phone. On, yeah. like, Hi, guys. Twenty-four seven. I think they're respectful. Where like, if like you know, it's a seven a.m. call in New York, which would be like four a.m. Yeah. our time. They're they're not going to call me. Maybe shouldn't call us. Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes it happens, but um, for the most part, you know, like. If we had like a problem cast, it would be really tough, but mm-hmm. they're so professional and so good. And it all comes from the top. Like I've worked on shows and, you know, on this show, it's it's interesting that like Yoan, because I think he's like classically trained, like British actor, that he respects the words so much that he reads every single word. And so I've been in situations where I've been in New York and like, you know, you've written one thing to be a certain way and then you get on the set and it like doesn't totally match what you wrote. So you got to change a few lines, and he's just like, I don't, I don't know about that. You know, he, like, he like learns the lines, like every word, and you're like, this is great. It's so nice, such a pleasure. Yeah. Um, that, that you know, because I've certainly worked on shows where people are just like, yeah, whatever. And yeah. Like, we'll I got the gist of it. I got the gist of it, and you're like, you ruined the rhythm. <laughs> now yeah. tell us about the writer writers room. Yeah. How do you guys? I mean, it's so intricate. Every mm. detail of the crime, it, it's yeah. so intricate. How do you guys start out? Is there a big white you guys just yeah, there's out a ideas. lot of whiteboards. It's brutal. It's um, I mean, it's not brutal. It's super fun, and it's a really good staff of writers. And um, there's a I worked on a show called Chuck, and um, there was a uh, huge fan yeah. over here. Oh, uh, good. Well, there's um, three of the writers from Chuck work, work on this show. Um, Chris Fiedak, who co-created Chuck, a guy named Phil Clemmer, and a guy named Zev Barrow. Um, all three I, were really good friends, and we worked with on that together. Um, and then two, we have three editors, and two of the three editors are the editors from Chuck, and so it's a lot of the same team is is together. Um, but what we do is basically, you know, we'll start with like a idea for an episode, like a kernel of an idea, um, and then we try and think like Jack the Ripper, for example. Like someone will pitch that idea, and we'll say, okay, well, let's talk about that. And so we talk about what would be like a possible A story there. And then we talk like, well, what's interesting about a 200-year-old guy solving that crime? Like as opposed to, you know, like a, a lot of very good but sh- straight up procedurals. Mm-hmm. Why, how does that play into the hook of our show? Mm-hmm. And like how does it connect emotionally or story-wise to Henry? Like either he – like maybe he knew – like in um, our fourth episode at the museum, you know, he knew the person that was actually killed. But he knew her, you know, 50 years ago. So yeah. that was sort of fun. So we try and think about that stuff, and then we think about well, what's the flashback story? Like, what we, we've we've talked roughly about like the chronological arc of Henry's life from like birth till present day, and then you start to think, well, what's what's a really good flashback story? What part of Henry's life matches the theme of this episode? Mm-hmm. And we kind of get a sense of what the flashback is, and then we then we get to the like, okay, well, what's how does Abe fit into this? Because that's always yeah, like, yeah, that's sort of the magic. Yeah, is, is what's Abe's take on this particular piece of material, and can he fold back into the A story somehow? Because it's not a traditional show where you have like an A story, a B story, a C story. We just, we have an A story, and then it has like offshoots, which mm-hmm. would be like our flashbacks, um, which is really hard for production because Yoan's in all of it. You know, like even though it's 200 years ago, it's still yeah. the same actor has to play it. Um, and then so we think of the Abe story. And then, so that's like the most basic version of the architecture that we get. And then we go to the whiteboard and we just got to like be like, okay, what's the crime and how do we break that story? And then we go and we figure, well, this is a nice opportunity for a flashback. And so we basically, you know, do what I call freeform jazz. Mm-hmm. And we play a lot of freeform jazz, just trying to kind of get a, a rough shape of an episode. And then we kind of fill in stuff. And then we do like one final day where we talk about every single beat in like tremendous detail before the writer goes off and writes the outline and then writes the script. Uh, do you guys have experts that you consult, like medical experts or yeah, for like have... the, the abbreviations you guys use all the time? Yeah. Or... We we have a um, a former Emmy who is yeah. is like a consultant to the show. I mean, at some point he's just going to take his name off the show because he's constantly telling me how ridiculous <laughs> some of this stuff is. Like medically speaking, he's like you absolutely could never tell how somebody hey, jumped off of the the bridge. Doctor Morgan can tell. Yeah. That's that's my feeling. Is the doc- I'm like the guy's immortal. Like he knows come on, everything. he knows everything. So so he his name is um, Shia Rabowski and. Um, 
he was like a you know he worked on like legitimate shows like Law and Orders and stuff like that that are well the show is legitimate legitimate, shows. legitimate you know but shows that like you know maybe the the sort of math and science of it all has to. You know, yes, the... exactly right, and 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 um, I look at that stuff a little bit more liberally, um, but uh, but yeah, he's, he's super super helpful, and he'll come to the set when we do the OCME, which is our um, you know the 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 autopsy kind of uh, coroner lab, and he he doesn't come there as often because Yoan sort of has the hang of like what to do, mm-hmm. but if there's a certain episode like on the Jack the Ripper episode, we you know, dissected like a brain or things like that. He'll come for like those special occasion oh. organ dissections. <laughs> is there an immortality expert? No. Like, is, who's the resident vampire is what we need to know. <laughs> um, we have a few of those on okay. staff. We have, <laughs> the writers, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but I, I, I like when I was researching this show, I did do a fair amount of like we had this thing in the pilot that was cut out of the pilot and I've put it into three separate episodes and it's been cut out of every episode oh, which is this thing called the immortal jellyfish there's there's a real um, you know organism called a, an immortal jellyfish and it like regenerates and lives forever or wow. for a really long time and there's people that you know like like there's no legitimate science in this television show but that <laughs> said like I there is you know we are living a lot longer and there are like legitimate scientists and doctors and people that spend their lives um studying like how do we possibly prolong our aging Mm -hmm. process Mm -hmm. and uh there was this japanese doctor that spent a lot of time studying the immortal jellyfish and how they actually are able to regenerate their cells and and continue living so in the pilot it got cut out of the pilot but we had this you know he was in his lab downstairs and this big beautiful fish tank with this beautiful we got an immortal jellyfish for the shoot and the pilot and then killed the immortal jellyfish. No, you didn't. <laughs> oh, Amazingly, no. yes. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, it was pretty, uh, the thing was going to live forever if we didn't cast it. And oh, so geez. we got this immortal jellyfish, which we killed. And so we just had to fill the tank with water quickly and shoot it. And then we got this even better uh, CGI um Oh, and now that yeah. one's really Which CGI. didn't die. And that one's really CGI. And so uh, we had this really like nice, beautiful moment where he's, I like, like, pretty colors like that kind of stuff like it's the kind of thing i just gravitate towards when i'm watching television and so he would like feed the jellyfish and he talked about how you know when the only other organism that shares your plate has neither a heart mm. nor a brain it can get a little lonely and all that kind of stuff mm. uh it was just too long it didn't fit in the in the pilot but maybe we'll see it in yeah future episodes. yeah yeah and it's and it's real well then it came up again today with the with the immortality because uh, henry got shot and it's come up a few times mm-hmm. like how does this healing happen now if he doesn't die does he heal like a regular person no 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 yeah he heals like a regular person mm-hmm. so like in the pilot he gets shot he's like actually shot right right okay. i mean like we've joked but in the had... writer's room like that if he had like a really bad cold he should just like right end yeah. it. that's, what, that's, that's what, like, what she said yeah, yeah he's got like a sinus infection he's like all right, this is I'm done. Done. I'm <laughs> done. i can't take this right just give me the gun Bam. all right well another one of our favorite characters is detective hansen yes which we found Donnie. out when donnie was um called into the show his first name is mike we we didn't know his first name yeah i didn't either i i, I learned it pretty late in, in this series i think you should have come up with that name <laughs> i know believe me he, he so was who just, created mike i don't know he was he was hansen and he was always just detective hansen and then like i think it was donnie or somebody said yeah he's mike hansen and i was like donnie i don't think i would have gone with mike i i just wasn't feeling that but it, like the ship had sailed and i was like all right i guess he's mike hansen it just yeah. feels a little pedestrian i don't know it's like a real new yorker i think it works all right, all right yeah. um but when he called on into the show we found out that he was a lead singer of a rock band and i think pega suggested that he sang in one of the episodes. I think that's a great idea. And we need this to happen because we have a whole Twitter campaign going, like oh. hashtag mm-hmm. get Donnie to sing. I love it. I, I, this is all news to me, by the way. First of all, the Arkansas accent is just incredible. It's right? amazing. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm all for it. I, I would love... <laughs> we I would need love, to get Donnie to sing. Yeah, just, yeah. To, like a whole musical episode. Oh, that's, that uh-huh. works. I, I just feel like it would... Yeah, it'd be great. I just like the idea that... Um, Henry and, and Joe would sort of wander into some bar some night and then there would be like Donnie yes. like, yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah. oh my god and when finally Lucas before yeah. we get into the next episode we'll do yeah. a re- quick recap we love Lucas yeah he's I mean if he has those one liners he's there for a little bit of comic yeah. relief a little levity but will we find out more about Lucas will his relationship with Dr. Morgan yeah 
grow i mean will he take him up on some drinks i feel like lucas is always like do you want to go to drink and yeah. it's like no and yeah he- i think um <laughs> i think part of that is like you know henry doesn't want to get too close to people but mm-hmm. like you know which we started that kind of idea in the pilot that he's mm-hmm. starting to like move a little closer and certainly with joe and then yeah lucas is really determined that he just wants to be friends with the guy Mm -hmm. and he's and you know uh, henry doesn't want any of that but um but yes we see in in the next episode he starts to move forward a little bit in his relationship with lucas a nice a lot is happening in the next episode it's a big episode episode. yeah okay cool all right well can we get into tonight's episode real quick we'll do a quick recap it was called new york kids okay um, so it opens on Dr. Tyler Forrester giving, uh, getting award, New York City's Give Back Hero Award. And then we find him dead in his apartment. Dun, dun, dun. Kaput. Murder weapon is the actual ro- award. Yeah. Um, and you but- know in an opening scene of the show, nobody's safe. No one's right, safe. Right, that's yeah. true. You don't want to be in that first scene of the no. episode. Someone's getting killed. Yeah. Someone's definitely getting <laughs> killed. Yeah. Um, we learn that his father is uh, extremely wealthy, but he didn't take any money. And then there's this tattoo on his chest. Yeah. It was uh, June. It was June basically 4-10-2005. So oh, yeah. June 10th. I, not 4. That's April. Um, June, But it was like backwards. <laughs> yeah. 5. Right. It was a mirror. It's confusing. In Roman numerals, it was complicated. It was yeah. really complicated. <laughs> um, but we find out, did you say you kind of have like a 50, you know, f- next episode's 50 Shades of Grey. Did you kind of think of, I know what you did last summer? We did, yeah, yeah, okay. we did. It was, um, and that doesn't always, it's not always the case. Like sometimes you just, like we're doing an episode in two weeks that's just like a jazz episode. Um, we're just, we just like to get into the world of jazz and it's not necessarily reminiscent of any movie. But if you can sort of, hold on to like and, and structurally this is you know obviously a much different structure mm-hmm. from i know you did last summer but the initial idea was that yeah mm-hmm. it was like the idea of of a crime that takes place in present day but has to do with something that happened in the past mm-hmm. because that like you know sort of henry's old bit is like you know holding on to the past and mm-hmm. and that it comes but you, you never really let go of it yeah. So there was that. That was the idea was to take that thematic, which Henry carries around, like the scars that we all carry mm-hmm. around with us, and you know whether it be like emotional baggage or scars, and even like Abe has like a secret, and Henry has a secret. You know, everyone has these things that they don't really want to share, and then and then to actually see this this character that was so overcome with guilt that he felt like he had to mm-hmm. like mark his body with like his big secret. Mm-hmm. Is that a yeah. theme in a lot of your shows is like Chuck had a secret. Like everyone yeah. has a secret. Everyone has secrets. Well, you know, if you tell everyone everything, yeah, you know, I, I've fun. got something I'd like to unload right now. <laughs> there you go, exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but so going with the themes, though. So the one a few weeks, ago, last week was the Jack the Ripper one. So mm-hmm. I know somebody on Twitter. I didn't get their handle, but they asked if he was going to uncover more mysteries from other real murders, like the Zodiac Killer. Right. Um, well, that episode, you know, was was specific. We did like, you know, Jack the Ripper. We did Black Dahlia. Mm-hmm. We did like a little sort of tease of Boston Strangler at the end of it. Um, and and maybe it, it feels like you don't want to kind of play that hand too, much. too often. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it'll be a little while. And and like, you know, with Henry, it's not like we, we didn't want to make him like Forrest Gump where, you know, he's just sort of there in history for all these things. Mm-hmm. I think we want to like see him in the periphery of stuff. Um, but yeah, so we don't do any real true crime stuff um, mm-hmm. in the next couple of episodes. We will learn a little bit about the anonymous caller at some point, though, and flash back to like a little true crime kind of stuff with Ooh. him. Oh gosh! Yeah. Well, what I liked about this Spoiler. episode is um, it's basically you know there was a group of four, right. four best friends from high school, and you didn't, you couldn't tell which one of them did it. If yeah. Any. Right. Right. And that's how I like. I'm really, really good at, at taking yeah. the killer out, and yeah. I couldn't. That's why I love this episode because I, I couldn't figure out which one. At first, I was like, it's Cass, and yeah. then yeah. something oh. happened. I was like, oh my god, it's not Cass, <laughs> and I was like, who is it? So. How do you kind of build the the killer into I mean, I not think, be the main people uh, and yeah, I mean, we can give away them. whatever it was about. So so in that episode, it was like you know we wanted up it was near kids and we wanted to play around with the three main suspects of the three kids, but like I, I think that for me it, it would have felt a little like unsatisfying to just be like 
you know, it was Cass because mm-hmm. she, she loved him, or it was Paul because he loved he Cass, loved her. Or, or, or Carter. Or would, like if it if it just sort of folded in, you weren't learning anything new. If it just kind of kept folding into itself about these three and passing it around, and I thought it was more interesting to like, you know, suspect all three of them, and that they all had maybe a reason to to do mm-hmm. it or not do it. Um, but that maybe there was they and and that they certainly were guilty and they were guilty of that crime of hitting the boy you know um, ten years ago, but that if it was a totally different like left turn to who actually did it in present day, um, so that's we we kind of played around with that idea and mm-hmm. you know we came up with the gas station guy who had been blackmailing you know mm-hmm. um, uh, Tyler and then he wanted to finally he, he had decided like he's doing that like little videotape Video. business mm-hmm. like he was gonna he, the, the, the weight of it was too much for him so he was gonna just fess up the whole thing yeah I love the way that it was cut with like all of their um, the yeah. interrogations oh, within cool. another. Yeah. how much do you play a role in how it's edited do you sit in the editing bay are you watching every move yeah <laughs> I spend um, a lot of time in editing it's it's like for any showrunner, it's it's literally. I mean, it depends on you know your particular day, um, and and you, like some days you're all in the room, some days you're writing, some days. But editing is the thing you you maybe spend the most of your time doing because yeah, yeah you got to shape the cuts and then the music and all of that. But just in 107 um, near kids it was designed to be that way. Like, mm-hmm. sometimes you write something and, like, it's like, all right, well, this scene's kind of slow and this scene's <laughs> kind of slow. Can we, like, intercut them? But that one was written to be, mm-hmm. you know, one line, one line, one line. Because they all, all play. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. supposed to play like that. All right. Um, well, I love the flashbacks in this one because you see Henry really torn yeah. when he chooses himself over a patient, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and is that why he basically decides not to be a doctor anymore yeah i think the the idea was that in that moment he you know joe asks him why aren't you a real doctor and he gets very offended on behalf <laughs> oh, yeah, of I'm medical exam yeah yeah um but that uh it, it, for him it was a moment where he realized that he had chosen to protect himself and his secret over a person and in that moment he sort of broke his he's a very honorable guy right Mm -hmm. and he sort of broke his oath and felt that like he really couldn't practice medicine anymore after that Mm -hmm. interesting Mm -hmm. all right well it's a really good episode do you have anything any more on the episode no do you guys Mm -hmm. want to get into predictions yeah do you want to go over the photos (laughs) and then we'll do photos okay cool and now you're after buzz tv Obviously, you know everything that happens, so you just smile and nod along. Okay, so you guys are going to guess. Mary, yeah, we're going to give a little prediction for you. Okay. Well, I predict we're going to meet Abe's ex-wife. That's gonna, yeah. We know that's going to be Yes, no, I, I, I'm just more excited to learn more about Adam. Well, now I know it's not going to be for a while. You said, like, not until, like, December sometime we're not going to see another Adam episode oh no i didn't say that i said you're not going to meet him oh we're not going to meet him okay we won't see i just need more adam that's a story i like i need more of that i know i agree i like the i like the adam stuff a lot but um it'll go fast you'll you'll yeah okay you'll be okay i wonder who's gonna play adam who is it the voice actor is also the adam actor um i'm not sure yet oh good question or is that giving away too much good question is it the same person is that all you He's like, wait, I haven't figured that uh, out wait, yet. Wait, so his name's not in the credits, obviously. I don't, Maybe not. Oh, right, right. No. Um, I don't know. I th- um... <laughs> That's his stock I answer. would be so like, I don't know. angry if I got a role in this awesome yeah. show forever. Right. And I can't even tell people or show people that like, I'm I'm it. him. <laughs> like, it's me. Maybe he's yeah. so famous that um, oh. he, yeah, he doesn't need it. He doesn't need the publicity. He, right. He's already yeah. out there. A there household name. And there were some theories at some point that Adam was maybe Joe's husband. Oh. I don't... I, that's not my theory. That's a theory I read somewhere. <laughs> that like, would oh, make no, things that's kind of scandalous. interesting. He, and he's like harassing Henry because he's like, get away from my woman. Yeah. yeah. Basically. <laughs> I see you sniffing around there. And yeah. Come on, man. No. You that. said that she's scientifically hot. So <laughs> it's like ghost. Yeah. Yes. In a way. Wow. All right. What do you I think? I like it. Um, I think we're going to see Detective Hansen sing. And then um, I, I still, I'm, I've been saying this every show, 
Lucas is going to be the first one that finds out a secret. And that's going to be what brings them together. And they're going to become BFFs because of that. <laughs> she has said that from the beginning. That's yeah. Lucas Possible. is going to be the first one. That's good. He deserves it. He's so cute and nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, my you, prediction is I want to, like you said, we'll probably learn more about Joe and her past mm-hmm. because she describes the way he died. He had like a, a heart attack on the treadmill. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's really how he died. Mm. I think Ooh. there's some sketchy stuff going on and maybe we get into that and maybe he was murdered. Mm. Maybe. So I'm looking forward to that. We'll, we'll definitely tell an episode where we get into Joe's dead husband. All right. What's his name? Uh, Sean. 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 All right, we don't have to get go through like some mystery to find out his Sean first name. Sean Martinez. Um, okay, now no, we have... No, not Martinez. Oh. She's the Martinez. He's oh. the Sean. Okay, he's the Sean. Yeah. Oh. Get it straight. Okay. He's Sean. They, yeah, she kept... She has her own, yeah. She's a very powerful... Right, empowered. Strong I, female. Yeah. And I absolutely love her. Oh, great. I love good. her so yeah. much. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. I like yeah, and, she's um, great. We had We didn't really talk about this. Her... Um, getting over shooting someone for the first time. Yeah. I thought that was a good because she is so strong as a way to make her vulnerable for right. for a mm-hmm. moment. Yeah, I, I yeah. Mean, yeah. She's obviously still a strong yeah. NYPD detective. Right. But it shows you know what they have to go through all the time. Yeah, yeah. We got we obviously it happened at the end of last episode or episode six, and then she sort of has that scene in the bar with Henry mm-hmm. before the um, before Adam interrupts things. Um, and then in this episode, she sort of deals with it a little bit, and yeah, he's sort of there to help her kind of get through it but yeah. um yeah she alana's uh awesome amazing actress and she's a pleasure a joy to work with in the same way that uh Yonis, she's great but well, we saw in this episode she got a little bit more sassy than usual and she i love is that sassy. Is, is that like part of her personality that's coming out yeah yeah, yeah. i think she's got like, a little bit more sass to her love, yeah. yeah it was fun uh, well hopefully she's gonna call into the, one of our after shows soon do you yeah, have- be great she's she's little kids and stuff so it's so late uh, for her you know so on the east coast it's like i know it's hard yeah it's like 2 30 where they are yeah. maybe maybe we'll yeah. leak the episode to us early so we can record our after show earlier oh great yeah, yeah absolutely. Do that yeah. for us no problem <laughs> solved so, um problem solvers problem right? yeah um now we have some cool uh beh- behind the scenes photos great we thought we could look at and you yeah. can maybe talk oh, us man. through you on set with uh that is that was the night um that we shot uh you know when when henry met abigail for the first time and little baby abe oh. baby abe and baby abe, i'm not gonna lie i shed a tear oh it was very sweet lie. and i'll tell you that that ba- it was it was a very cold winter and it was a particularly cold night and that baby was it was a real you know baby and we had like a little warming tent but it was freezing oh. and the kid had like a, the most adorable smile on his face the whole time he was awesome and then also like if, if you know if you've watched the pilot in that scene i don't know if you can tell but like there was these big beautiful snowflakes that came down mm-hmm. yes. and that you know sometimes you have to generate that it, it happened just like oh, we got wow. really I mean, oh. like if it had been like 10 degrees warmer it would have been rained it'd been like miserable um, and it was, was this last winter? Yeah, this yeah. was this. Um, I guess you probably shot that around like it was a really cold winter, but it was probably around like March. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. All right, let's see what else we got. And this was a couple weeks ago at Comic Con New York. Yeah. Yeah. How was that? It was great. Yeah. It was super fun, and um, you know, you like never know if anyone's going to even show up. And and we got like a couple thousand people, I think, showed up and um, oh, asked Cons. really good questions. It was great, and we made this little Comic Con reel that we just posted online. So yeah, it was great. Oh, wow. Did anyone stump, stump you today? with any of their questions? No. Uh, one guy had a really good question, which was like, if Henry always knows he's going to die and come up in water, why doesn't he like pack a bag and hide it somewhere by the water with like his clothes? Hey, that's which brilliant. I thought was a really good idea. Yeah. 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 That is a good idea. Does he always, he's always like reborn in the same place? No, I mean like that's, that's uh, he, he's not supposed to be reborn in the same place. It's a um, function of uh, the production schedule. Gotcha. You know, like in my perfect world, we would find lots of different places and then you end up, you're like, all right, well, we've got this plate that we've already <laughs> shot for here. Yeah, so do you have like it. 50 shots of him coming up in the water in that one spot in different ways? We, we've, like, got, we've got like him in a, actually in a, in a pool against green coming mm-hmm. up in a lot of different ways. And so we've shot it with him coming up in the water but then we've done like Henry with like a mustache coming out of the water and Henry with like mutton chops 
in case like you just you know like <laughs> for any time case. period that yeah. you need him to die yeah. and come out of a body of water yeah right so he when he's regenerated he comes back looking the way he looks when he, died. he just died right, the right, most recent right, death right yeah yeah these rules oh, tattoos. I gotta write them down how about tattoos I gotta know if he has a tattoo does it will it come back or? oh uh, he doesn't have a tattoo but um, no it wouldn't come back the only mm-hmm. thing that comes back is that scar thing yeah. he's got mm-hmm. from the first shot from the first time yeah alright let's see what else we got Oh, oh yeah! No. Oh, that's so look at these uh, guys. Lucas. Yeah, that's from the pilot Joel and Yoan. All right, so let's cute. see. Hanging out. Let's see and what Detective Hanson. Detective Hanson and Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Reese. Mm-hmm. Now, is this on a soundstage? Yeah, this is um, in our uh, police precinct there. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Are most of the locations on soundstage or outside? No, no. Most of it's like outside and about the world. We, mm-hmm. we Our soundstage, we have um, the OCME, which is the lab, and mm-hmm. then the police precinct. And then we have on another soundstage, Henry, this is pretty recent, we have the um, you know the basement lab that Henry has yeah. and the antique shop is on a stage. But the actual antique shop and the apartment where they live is a real location in the Lower East Side. It's a, like a store that we leased and we dressed with antiques and wow. painted Abe's outside. So, oh like, we gosh. shoot, you know, in front so of... So anyone yeah. could just go yeah, visit just it? Yeah, walk by walk and by. be in the I, shot. I want to yeah. go to New York. I know. We'll just have to go up there and just... Yeah. Stand outside We're of gonna, Abe's Antiques. Yeah. Crash the set. set. Yeah. It's like the Today Show. You can like just wave and come in behind it. Yeah. That's like, so hey, cool. wait, Abe's not here. Yeah. Abe's not real. Um, all right, let's see what else we got. So another behind the scenes yeah. shot of looks like an interrogation. Yeah, no, that's uh, like our conference room. Um, yeah, that's um, Donnie and Alana, and it looks like we've got little Henry there with the back of his uh, lab coat yeah. on business. Um, yeah, that's just that's inside our, our precinct. All right, let's see what else. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, and that's one of we have uh, two first uh, ADs, assistant directors. That's one of them named Peter Saldo. Great guy. Oh. Nice. Ah, wow. and that's uh, Lorraine and Alana and and Moxie, uh, w- w- one of our DPs, uh, DP. directors. So we have two DPs. So they alternate every other week. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Every, um, Donnie and Joel, when they called in, they just said that set is, we, like you said, everyone's so amazing that they have so much sun on set. Yeah, we're really, really fortunate. The cast is great and the crew is fantastic. Just really, really <laughs> lucky group. Yeah. It looks like they're having Aww. some fun. Yeah, they're having fun. Selfies? And they're like, yeah. Everyone they're... needs a selfie. Right? All right. Oh, there's a yeah, autopsy? That's... Yeah, that's the autopsy. That's our OCME, which is, you know, where we... Yeah, there's two cameras there, and they, um, I, I'm, it's hard for me to tell. It looks like that the body is, we, we did this kind of, um, a person uh, gets burned in a car, so we have like a charred, I can't tell, but mm. it sort of looks like that's the charred so. body um, there in the background. What kind of camera do you guys use? Um, we use uh, an Alexa. That's some hefty equipment. Yeah. <laughs> Donnie. And we have a couple yeah. of Donnie. I think our uh, on-site camera person is just Clearly following was like, Donnie around. So the show's about this guy, Detective Hanson. Yeah. Mike. He has to deal with this M.E. guy. And yeah. he sings. Yeah. They were saying, oh, like, <laughs> like, what is he doing? We're, we're actually going to learn in an episode um, about uh, Detective Hanson's kids because he's going to, he'll get shot and goes into the hospital. Okay. And okay. He's got like these little kids running around. It's good. It's really cute. Oh. All right. Yeah, Detective Hanson's character reminds me a lot of Dokes in Dexter, mm. with the the character that's just suspicious of the main guy. Right? Yeah. He's yeah. like, I got my eye on you. Yeah, you need. But that. less abrasive. Not less abrasive and more lovable. Yeah. Like Donnie's pretty lovable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I asked um, John, the the co executive producer, like you know, what what question can I ask Donnie? He's going to be on the show, and he says that he has a really hard job because he always has to foil. Dr. Morgan. Yeah, He's yeah. always and challenging him. everyone loves him. Henry, so it's like, yeah, you got to be the sort of force. But I think that they have a good relationship. I just think, like, you know, Hanson's like a cop that's been doing it for a while. Mm-hmm. And he just, like, he's not... He's kind, of not, he's kind of looking for the easy way out of things. He's looking for, like, open and shut cases to be open and shut cases. He wants to get home, <laughs> yeah. like, crack open a beer, <laughs> watch forever, mm-hmm. and just kick back with his kids. And, like, Henry comes into things and is always, like, with these crazy theories about stuff. It just, they don't see eye to eye all the time. Yeah. I think, is that our last one, Marissa? I think so. Yep. That's it. 
Beautiful. Awesome. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Good session, guys. That thank you. It. That was we fantastic. We learned so much. I hope you can join us again sometime. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. Thank Where, you guys for doing this. Of course. What can we find you on social media? Uh, Matt Miller TV, Twitter handle, Matt mm -hmm. Miller TV. All right, follow him, ask him any questions you yeah. want about the show. What about you guys? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Mary Lou Mandel, M-A-R-I-E-L-O-U-M-A-N-D-L. -E yes, I have to spell it every time. <laughs> <laughs> you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at Pegarad. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Kate Aquilano. Again, thank you to Matt Miller thank for you. joining Thanks, us. Thanks, guys. See you next week, same time, same place. Bye, guys. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. with guilt that he felt like he had to like mm -hmm. mark his body with like his big secret mm -hmm. that a yeah. theme in a lot of your shows is like chuck had a secret like, everyone <laughs> yeah. has a secret everyone has secrets well you know if you tell everyone everything yeah, yeah. I, I, i've fun. got something i'd like to unload right now <laughs> there you go exclusive yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah but so going with the themes though so the one a few weeks ago, last week was the jack the ripper one so mm -hmm. i know somebody on twitter i didn't get their handle but they asked if he was going to uncover more mysteries from other real murders like the zodiac killer right um well that episode you know was was specific we did like you know jack the ripper we did black dahlia mm -hmm. we did like a little sort of tease of boston strangler at the end of it um and and maybe it, it feels like you don't want to kind of play that hand too, too often mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it'll be a little while and and like you know with henry it's not like we we didn't want to make him like forrest gump or you know, he's just sort of there in history for all these things. Mm -hmm. I think we want to, like, see him in the periphery of stuff. Um, but, yeah, so we don't do any real true crime stuff mm -hmm. um, in the next couple of episodes. We will learn a little bit about the anonymous caller at some point, though, and flash back to, like, a little true crime kind of stuff with Ooh. him. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, what I liked about this Spoiler. episode is um, it's basically, you know, there was a group of four, right. four best friends from high school, and you didn't, you couldn't tell which one of them did. How do you guys start out? Is there a big whiteboard? Are you guys just throwing out Yeah, there's out a ideas? lot of whiteboards. It's brutal. It's, um, I mean, it's not brutal. It's super fun. And <laughs> it's a really good staff of writers. And um, there's a, I worked on a show called Chuck. And um, there was a uh, huge fan yeah. over here. Oh, uh, good. Well, there's um, three of the writers from Chuck work, work on this show. Um, Chris Fiedak, who co-created Chuck, a guy named Phil Clemmer. And a guy named Zev Barrow. Um, all three I, were really good friends, and we worked with on that together. Um, and then two, we have three editors, and two of the three editors are the editors from Chuck. And so it's a lot of the same team is, is together. Um, but what we do is basically, you know, we'll start with, like, an idea for an episode, like a kernel of an idea. Um, and then we try and think, like, Jack the Ripper, for example. Like, someone will pitch that idea, and we'll say, okay, well, let's talk about that. And so we talk about what would be like a possible A story there. And then we talk like, well, what's interesting about a 200-year-old guy solving that crime? Like as opposed to, you know, like a, a lot of very good but sh straight up procedurals. Mm -hmm. Why, how does that play into the hook of our show? Mm -hmm. And like how does it connect emotionally or story-wise to Henry? Like either he – like maybe he knew – like in um, our fourth episode – at the museum, you know, he knew the person that was actually killed, but he knew her, you know, 50 years ago. So yeah. that was sort of fun. So we try and think about that stuff. There's a real location in the Lower East Side that's a, like a store that we leased and we dressed with antiques and wow. painted Abe's outside. So oh like we gosh. shoot, you know, and Front so of, anyone yeah. could just go yeah, visit just it? Yeah, walk by walk and by. be in the I, shot. I want to yeah. go to New York. I know. We'll just have to go up there and just <laughs> yeah. stand outside of Abe's Antiques. Yeah. Crash the set. Yeah. It's like the Today Show. You can like just wave <laughs> and come and find it. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, so cool. wait. Abe's not here? Yeah. Abe's not real? Um, all right. Let's see what else we got. So another behind the scenes yeah. shot of looks like an interrogation? Yeah. No, that's uh, like our conference room. Um, yeah. That's... Um, 
Donnie and Alana, and it looks like we've got little Henry there with the back of his uh, lab coat yeah. on business. Um, yeah, that's just that's inside our, our precinct. All right, let's see what else. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, and that's one of we have uh, two first uh, ADs, assistant directors. That's one of them named Peter Saldo. Great guy. Oh. Nice. Uh, <laughs> and that's uh, Lorraine and Alana and, and Moxie, uh, w w one of our DPs, uh, DP. directors. So we have two DPs, so they alternate every other week. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. every, um, Donnie and Joel, when they called in, they just said that set is, we, like you said, everyone's so amazing that they have so much sun on set. Yeah, we're really, really fortunate. The cast is great and the crew is fantastic. Just really, really <laughs> lucky group. Yeah. It looks like they're having Aww. some fun. Yeah, they're having fun. So and they're fun here. Oh, I, so, I have it, so, you have it. One okay. of our Twitter followers. Uh, yeah, there you go. Nice. Because I don't get Halloween. I have to work on Halloween. So, oh, so you're, you're dressing up. Okay, you're good. dressing up. My costume. You're Henry Morgan? Yes. yes. So, Anna uh, Eventis, I think I'm saying her name right. Does Henry have extra of his favorite scarves in case he dies while wearing one and loses it? That's a great question. Yes, he has to have, if he finds something that's working for him, he has to have doubles of tweed suits and scarves and vests and nice shoes yeah. and things like that. Yes. When he dies, it's very, it's a little complicated when yeah, he dies. Yeah, we always yeah. get. Let's yeah. talk. So yeah. how did you, like the rules, like so everything he has on him. Yeah disappears but yeah. like not the stopwatch but his clothes disappear no the stopwatch if he had uh, anything on his person oh, okay. that he has on his person disappears so you know fortuitously like when he shot at the be in the pilot like um first on the slave ship you see the pocket watch mm -hmm. fall out of him mm -hmm. and then on the subway the pocket watch sort of falls out and that's what joe finds on the on the uh, subway car so like the pocket watch is one of those things that worked really, really nicely in the pilot. But when you start to do it in series, it's sort of like, you know, it's a big pain in the ass because if he happens to, he has to fortuitously leave the pocket watch at home. If he, yeah. if he imagines he's going here. into danger, yeah. And that's yeah. why we don't see the watch anymore. But that's why we don't really deal with the watch that yeah, much we anymore. thought it was going to be like a, a little symbol going forward after the pocket. What happened was um, I was putting um, my uh, five-year-old son to bed one night. And um, he asked me, as like five-year-olds, you know, can do. He said, um, "Daddy, are you ever going to die someday?" Oh. And you're like, you know, you don't want to tell them. And so I said, uh, "No, no, I'll never die." Um, you know, I didn't want to upset him or anything. And then I thought about it, and I realized you're, you know, supposed to build like trust through honesty and all that kind of business. So I decided to come clean. So I said, "All right, I, Daddy wasn't completely truthful. I will die someday." But it won't be for a very long time, and by then you'll probably want me to be dead. Uh, at which point he burst into tears. My wife like Aww. came running into the room, and I was kind of banished from the room, and yeah. she continued raising my kid. <laughs> and I went off to write television, and so I started like kind of playing with that idea about like what if a character, you know, for some reason couldn't or wouldn't die. Okay. You know, all the amazing things that you could do with with eternity. And then you start to think, well, but what if my son wasn't immortal too? You know, would it would it watching him grow old and die and friends and family and all that stuff, would it prove to be more of a, like a curse than a blessing? Mm -hmm. So I started with that kind of idea of, of a character that like kind of had the thing that we all wanted, you know, on mm -hmm. some level and, and that he he didn't want it. He was there to tell you that like I have immortality and it's it's terrible. Right. Um, and, and to start with that kind of, you know, conflict in the character mm -hmm. and being there like the writers will go to produce their episodes and um john kretschmer we have a producing director who is from la that lives there because the directors come in and different directors direct every you know episode mm -hmm. but you have one person that's there but like i don't know like today was like a weird day where you know like first thing in the morning i got a call from alana there was like a question about something and then later on in the day i had a yo and called me about so, you know it's, sometimes there's just like something in like the air yeah where you feel like oh, god i wish i could just like walk down to the set right yeah. now and totally unrelated questions about totally different like situations um and then like that's why you got to go like every three weeks you just gotta like let them know that like hey guys i'm still and and for for them they're just getting new scripts and shooting the episodes but like for me you know i see them like in the editing room like all day every day so it feels like you're you know sort of still there with them is there an additional showrunner outside of you that's on set all mm -hmm. the time no, no they just can call no. you it's a, is that hard to do remotely like yeah obviously. yeah well they, yeah, yeah you just gotta keep you just have your phone, phone on, yeah. like 24 7 i think they're respectful we're mm -hmm. like if like you know 
it's a 7 a.m. call in New York, which would be like 4, 4 a.m. Yeah. our time. They're, they're not going to call me. Maybe shouldn't call them. Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes it happens. But um, for the most part, you know, like if we had like a problem cast, it would be really tough. But mm-hmm. they're so professional and so good. And it all comes from the top. Like, just a friendship. Is there going to be... I, I Sometimes, I mean, I, I see the whole friendship thing. The, yeah. the banter, super yeah. cute. I like the friendship. But once in a while, I just feel glam- like glimpses of There may a be a little, little spark. More, a I spark. think there'll be a little bit of a spark. Okay. I think that... Um, yeah, it's like with that kind of stuff, like it's it's a little bit, you know, you have to be very careful because once you start turning on like the will they or won't they, you're just on that train. Right, right. And so it's kind of hard to get off of that. And so we're going to try and mine as much kind of emotional core for them, like an emotional connection, like, you know, he's had a lot of loss and Abigail and all that business. And then she and her husband, and we'll get into that story and we're going to tell like a really nice Joe and her dead husband story. Yeah, <laughs> a nice I feel story. Like... A really sweet, funny <laughs> With her Joe and her, and her dead, dead husband. husband. Yeah. I feel like in tonight's episode, we kind of got a foreshadow yeah. of Joe and her husband's yeah. kind of what happened there, right? Yeah, um, and we will, you know, really dive into it in an episode. There'll be an episode where, like, Joe sort of has to, you know, they have to solve an A story, but that the A story directly relates to like her dead husband, okay. so it forces her to like kind of deal with all this baggage stuff that she hasn't dealt with and she's they find like an old deposition tape because he was an attorney of of a case that he was working on and then so she gets to see him you know like in a deposition in like footage that she never even knew kind of existed henry it was really hard to find henry because like you know i needed to like hear someone read it and needed to like feel it and you needed to believe like because the concept's so big you needed an actor that like could do the humor and the romance, but that really would ground the performance. Like you'd really believe mm-hmm. that this guy lived for like over 200 years. And and we looked in LA and New York and Canada and London and Australia wow. and like South Africa. We were looking for, ev- for everywhere. Wow. And, um, and then one day I was dropping both of my kids off at preschool and um, this guy like was getting into his car and he had like these was rocking these white loafers. And I was just, it was just like shocking to see a man in white loafers and no socks. And I was like, God, who is that guy? And then uh, I realized it was Yoan and I, I, you know, I had never worked with him or anything, but I knew him from like Fantastic Four and those movies. And I was like, God, that guy is really interesting. And so, you know, the casting director called his agent, sent him the script, he liked it, we met. Then he came in, read it and it was great. Wow. wow. We really have your five-year-old to thank for this yeah. series. Really do. I know. I have, a, I have a five-year-old and a six-year-old. The six-year-old. And yeah, yeah, yeah. This was, uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. well, one of my kids is, is Henry, so we don't have Henry. <gasps> oh, Henry. Yeah, yeah. gosh. So but when you're coming together. It's like, what's going on here? This yeah. is like, when you come into the show next time, you have to bring them. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah. be a uh, one of the, quick story, one of the first people I met when I came to LA for the first time. Oh, we'll show you yeah. after. We showed it to uh, our, to the fans. Because oh, it was really? so cute to, oh, to take the adorable. time. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, she really liked that. Um, <laughs> so, two weeks ago, ABC ordered some additional scripts. Yeah. So, what does that mean? Season two? Uh, well, first we wanted, you know, we got we got we got to get a full season one here. Um, but is that, that's. Let's but it was it was it's a it's a good vote of confidence and um and so yeah we're cer- certainly planning on like a you know twenty two like our our season has been broken in the writers room as if we're doing twenty two so we have planned that out oh so hopefully yeah ho- you know they seem really happy like creatively you know like a lot of times you'll have like the network or the studio they throw scripts out and outlines or mm-hmm. whatever we've, they've been great so far we've gotten a lot of support from ABC and Warner Brothers. Um, in like the creative elements of the show, so yeah, hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, they let us keep I mean, doing it because it's so much fun to crossed. make. Yeah, no, it must be so fun. Do you? We were talking before. Do you visit? Because you're based in LA, but it's shot in New York. Do you visit yeah. New York a lot? Yeah, I go like probably once every three weeks or a okay. month, and um, just sort of pop in. But then, like you know, like it's it's weird because it's just so hard not to be able to like walk down to the set. Mm -hmm. Um, And just, you know, just not being there. Like the writers will go to produce their episodes. And um, John Kretschmer, we have a producing director who is from L.A. that lives there. Because the directors come in and... And to not be the main 
people and yeah, and then we can give away them. whatever it was about. So, so in that episode, it was like you know we wanted up when you're kids, and we wanted to play around with the three main suspects of the three kids, but like. I think that for me, it would have felt a little like unsatisfying to just be like, you know, it was Cass because mm -hmm. she loved him or it was Paul because he loved he Cass loved or, or, or Carter. Or would, like if it, if it just sort of folded in, you weren't learning anything new if it just kind of kept folding into itself about these three and passing it around. And I thought it was more interesting to like, you know, suspect all three of them and that they all had maybe a reason to, to do mm -hmm. it or not do it. Um, but that maybe there was they and and that they certainly were guilty and they were guilty of that crime of hitting the boy you know um, ten years ago, but that if it was a totally different like left turn to who actually did it in present day, um, so that's we we kind of played around with that idea and mm -hmm. you know we came up with the gas station guy who had been blackmailing you know mm -hmm. um, uh, Tyler and then he wanted to finally he, he had decided like he doing that like little videotape video. business mm -hmm. like he was gonna he, the, the, the weight of it was too much for him so he was gonna just fess up the whole thing yeah i love the way that it was cut with like all of their um the yeah. interrogations oh, within cool. yeah. how much do you play a role in how it's edited do you sit in the editing bay are you watching every move one guy had a really good question which was like if henry always knows he's gonna die and come up in water why doesn't he like pack a bag and hide it somewhere by the water with like his clothes hey, that's which i brilliant. thought was a really good idea yeah yeah yeah. That is a good idea. Does he always, he's always like reborn in the same place? No, I mean like that's, that's, uh, he, he's not supposed to be reborn in the same place. It's a um, function of uh, the production schedule. Gotcha. You know, like in my perfect world, we would find lots of different places and then you end up, you're like, all right, well, we've got this plate that we've already <laughs> shot for here. Yeah, so do you have like it. 50 shots of him coming up in the water in that one spot in different ways? We, we've like, got, we've got like him in a, actually in a, in a pool against green coming mm -hmm. up in a lot of different ways. And so we've shot it with him coming up in the water but then we've done like Henry with like a mustache coming out of the water and Henry with like mutton chops in case like you just you know like <laughs> for any time case. period that yeah. you need him to die yeah. and come out of a body of water yeah right so he when he's regenerated he comes back looking the way he looks when he, died. he just died right, the right, most recent right, death right yeah yeah these rules oh, tattoos, I gotta write them down how about tattoos I gotta know if he has a tattoo, does it will it come back? Or? Oh, uh, he doesn't have a tattoo, but um, no, it wouldn't come back. The only mm -hmm. thing that comes back is that scar thing yeah. he's got mm -hmm. from the first shot. From the first time. Oh. Yeah. All right, let's see what else we got. Oh, oh yeah. That's oh. Oh, that's, so look at these uh, guys. Lucas. Yeah, that's from the pilot, Joel and Yoan. All right, so let's cute. see. Hanging out. And vests and nice shoes yeah. and things like that. Yes. When he dies, it's very, it's a little complicated yeah, when he dies. Yeah, I always yeah. get. Let's yeah. talk. So, yeah. how did you, like, the rules? Like, so everything he has on him yeah. disappears, but, yeah. like, not the stopwatch, but his clothes disappear. No, the stopwatch, if he had uh, anything on his person oh, okay. that he has on his person disappears. So, you know, fortuitously, like when he shot at the in the pilot, like um, first on the slave ship, you see the pocket watch mm -hmm. fall out of him, mm -hmm. and then on the subway, the pocket watch sort of falls out, and that's what Joe finds on the on the uh, subway car. So, like the pocket watch is one of those things that worked really, really nicely in the pilot. But when you start to do it in series, it's sort of like, you know, it's a big pain in the ass because if he happens to, he has to fortuitously leave the pocket watch at home. If he, yeah. if he imagines he's going here. into danger, yeah. And that's yeah. why we don't see the watch anymore. But that's why we don't really deal with the watch that yeah, much. We anymore. thought it was going to be like a, a little symbol going forward we, after the pilot. We, we will it, it, revisit the pocket watch and revisit the origin of the pocket watch and, and how he got the pocket watch and those circumstances. And, you know, because we're going to do an episode... Um, um, episode 14 which will be it, it's our f only flashback that we'll have done that predates Henry's affliction nice. so we'll get to see Henry in London like circa like 1812 or something before he got on the slave ship and why he got on the slave lasted and, and you know maybe there's things that Henry learns that he didn't you know um, interactions between the two of them that he may not have known about and and we'll, yeah get into that kind of interpersonal stuff um, without and, and he'll certainly learn more about his affliction and a little bit of the rules of it that he didn't know through Adam um, but um, 
we're not going to like solve the mystery of, of why he's immortal or anything. Well, yeah. Adam is a big thing that we always are thinking about and a lot of the Twitter followers are thinking about. So specifically, Redhead03, Stacy was asking for spoilers on Adam. you have anything you can give us? Anything Little juicy? teases? Um, let's see. So Adam, it, it was just in last week's episode, mm-hmm. uh, Jack the Ripper. That was and, a good episode. Yeah, it was a really good episode. And, um, and he will return... Um, in an episode uh, sort of right before Christmas. And um, we will meet Adam. Ooh. How about that? Okay, so was it him outside calling him? Because her and I thought that we saw him for a split second. When he comes outside. In the Jack the the Ripper episode. Yeah. In the Jack the Ripper episode, he calls Henry, and then he comes outside, and we saw for a split second. They're at the butcher. So I guess the question is, have we seen Adam? And then the the phone's there and all that But, like, there's a quick crowd shot. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we've seen him. I don't know. I don't know. I swear. (laughs) That guy looks so shady. You you may have to. Emmy, who is, (gasps) is like a consultant to the show. I mean, at some point, he's just going to take his name off the show because he's constantly telling me how ridiculous <laughs> some of this stuff is. Like, medically speaking, he's like, you absolutely could never tell how somebody hey, jumped off of the, the bridge. Dr. Morgan can tell. Yeah. That's, that's my feeling. Is the di- I'm like, the guy's immortal. Like, he knows come on. Everything. He knows everything. So, so he, his name is um, Shia Rabowski. And um, he was like, a, you know, he worked on like legitimate shows like Law and Orders and stuff like that. That are, well, you the know, show is legitimate. Shows. Legitimate, you know, but shows that like, you know, maybe the the sort of math and science of it all has to you be. Know, Who is yes, it? exactly right. And 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 um, I look at that stuff a little bit more liberally. Um, but uh, but yeah, he's, he's super super helpful, and he'll come to the set when we do the OCME, which is our um, you know the 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 autopsy kind of uh, corner lab. And he, he doesn't come there as often because Yoan sort of has the hang of, like, what to do. Mm-hmm. But if there's a certain episode, like on the Jack the Ripper episode, we, you know, dissected, like, a brain or things like that. He'll come for, like, those special occasion oh. organ dissections. Yeah. Is there an immortality expert? No. Like, is, who's the resident vampire is what we need to know. <laughs> um, we have a few of those on staff. We have, <laughs> the writers, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but, I, I, I like, when I was researching this show, I did do fair amount of like we had this thing in the pilot that was cut out of the pilot